for the moment. The way this is going to work is we are going to have speeches from the candidates uh, from the most junior office upward with the alphabetically first candidates speaking first in each race based on surnames. They're going to speak for three minutes. The presidential candidates will speak for five minutes and then we will take three questions from the floor if there are any for each of the candidates. Good? Okay, we'll start. I'll call first Josh Kiblin, who is a candidate for Speaker's Officer, to speak as to why he should have that role. Thank you. Just stay up there for a second, Josh. Um, can I just check with the stewards? What's the microphone situation down there? You have one. Okay, great. Um, when you ask your questions, please wait for a microphone. There are people watching on the live stream, and it will affect how they vote, so it's really important. Okay, if you want to ask a question, please stick up your hand now. Okay, can we get a mic to um, Josh? Are you happy to hand your mic? Josh, one of the things I've noticed about the guest speakers we get at the union is we get very few industrialists, very few heads of companies who might be possible employers for our graduates. Would you try and get some industrialists? I've asked for this before, but it doesn't seem to happen. Uh, absolutely, and I can provide you an example of how I did that with Clio. So we ran a series of talks on the Industrial Revolution, and we had a major representative from Ford there to speak about how they use that as well. So I t fully take the point. Um, there was briefly an attempt to create a, uh, a speaker's uh, 
or a union, um, what was it called, career service, which would have introduced that, that project unfortunately fell through, but I fully take the point and I will try, yes. Do we have another question? Nope. Okay, great. Uh, we will move on to our next candidate for Speaker's Officer, Louis Van Steen. Um, when you're ready, make a speech. Good evening, everyone. Um, and thank you all very much for coming down to the union for this hustings. Um, my name is Louis Van Steen. Um, I've been involved on committee with the union for the past year now in my role as head of audiovisual. Um, my deputy, Leo, is currently up there running the event for me today. Um, I've ensured that myriad events over my time have run as smoothly as they can, and I've witnessed innumerable speaker, speakers' events in the process. Um, so I know what works for speakers' events, but I've also seen the problems that have hindered the union's potential over the past year, and I need your vote tomorrow to allow me to implement tangible solutions uh, that will make Easter's speakers line up the best it can be. First of all, now, I don't know if any of you have seen the YouTube channel, um, but right now it looks distinctly like a sorely missed opportunity, uh, meaning that we're missing out on a considerable amount of revenue and outreach. Bill Gates, for example, only has 3,000 views, which is pitiful for such a big speaker. We should be capitalizing on YouTube ad revenue to bolster the budget for speakers in Easter, which, by the way, is about half that of the other terms. This would allow us to invite more big, diverse speakers from around the world who might otherwise not be able to attend. And the way I'm going to implement this is to upload more short clips of speaker events alongside the main promotional, uh, the longer videos for promotional purposes. Um, I will fix the website, incorporating every, all the material that we have together in a central place um, to stop the sort of sprawling Facebook event system we have going on now, which means that people miss out on quality events. Um, ultimately, the bigger our online presence, the bigger the speakers we attract, and the better Easter term will be. It's a simple correlation. Second of all, um, I will redevelop the union's accessibility policy in order to allow everyone to get the most out of their union. Uh, this will also improve the union's reputation as a whole, as an inclusive institution, attracting more diverse speakers and future members, especially in light of recent controversy elsewhere. Uh, to do this, I'll codify concrete protocols, as well as providing uh, an accessible means of contact to consult directly with the members. Uh, I'll cut through the bureaucracy to make concrete and effective change. Third of all, uh, I want to restructure the way Speakers' Committee works. I've spoken to some people who are on Speakers' Committee in the past and uh, barely wrote any invites, and then there are people who wrote hundreds. Um, there's always going to be a disparity in how much time people have um, uh, to uh, put into something like this. Um, so in order to ensure that the wide range of interests of our members give rise to an equally diverse array of speakers in Easter, uh, I'll appoint a committee that, repre a, that represents a range of subject areas broadening the focus beyond the narrowly political to ensure that um, a range of uh, members' interests are taken account of and to drag people out of their revision bunkers in such a busy Easter term. Um, I want the union to be a central hub of ideas in Cambridge, and in its current more niche capacity, this just isn't possible. A vote for me tomorrow, then, is a vote for tangible, productive change in the areas that really matter to all our members, um, to ensure that Easter is a term to remember for everyone. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for Louis? Richard? Uh, could somebody get Richard that, that mic? Um, could you tell us what year you're in, what college you're in, and what subject you're studying in, since we have that information for the other candidate? Absolutely. I was aware of time constraints. But, so I'm, my name is Louis Van Steen. I'm a second year linguistics student at Magdalen College. There we are. Thank Do you. we have any other questions for Louis? Nope. Wonderful. Happy voting tomorrow in that race. <laughs> right. Next, we have our candidates for the role of executive officer. Um, first, we welcome Sarah. The floor is yours. 
Hi everyone, it's so good to see so many of you here since we hardly get turnouts for most hustings. But my name is Sara, I am a second year historian at Medwoods and I'm running to be executive officer. Um, in the course of the next few minutes, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to demonstrate why I'd make a good executive officer. Most of that comes from the experience I've had over the past year. And secondly, I'm going to show that I have a vis vision, something that's new and different, that I bring something unique to this place. So what experience have I had? I got involved in the union about a year ago. Um, the first event that I ever did was as a runner at the IV since um, in my high school, I did a lot of debating. It was my first ever experience with the union. I came here in year 12 for a debating competition. So I came here wanting to get involved with debating. And I did that at the IV. And then um, I rather scarily ran for a standing committee position as access officer because I wanted to use this massive, extraordinary platform that we have. We're a charity, which means that our main motive is to do good for the community, right? To do good for school students, to do good for university students here. So I really wanted to capitalize on this. And I did successfully as access officer. I, extended our, I expanded our outreach program to more state schools than ever. Um, I had schools with high free school meal intakes in, um, running debating workshops for them so that they could benefit from the glorious um, qualities that you can gain from public speaking and debating. Um, and I also put together a panel in collaboration with Student Minds centered around men's mental health because I realized that there wasn't much of a conversation around that happening in Cambridge. So I wanted to use this massive venue and this great platform that we have to get that conversation going. So I did all of these things last year. And then currently right now, I'm organizing one of the world's biggest schools competitions, debating competitions um, this year, which we're uh, our first rounds will be happening in a couple of weeks. So, um, very experienced. So what do I want to bring? I want to bring power to members. A lot of my friends feel that just as members, they have very little autonomy. They don't get to suggest debates um, or speakers very often. There's no centralized platform for that to happen. So I want to have one permanently up on our Facebook members page. I want to modernize the debates and that includes diversity. I think diversity is something that people put on their manifestos because you know it gets votes but I have a strategy um, in order to, to bring about greater diversity so that more women for example are speaking in our debates and more people of BAME backgrounds as well are speaking in, in our debates. Like for example I'm very intimidated quite easily. Um, I haven't yet put myself forward to audition for a debate because I just feel like people that come from my background and look like me don't do incredible things like that. So I think the more people we have and if that requires tokenism, getting token speakers in, then I think that's a necessary step to take. I also want to make this place a little bit more grounded. Um, sort of quotes from my friends that I've heard is that the union has a stick up its ass, that it's elitist, exclusionary. I want to change that. And I think one thing that we can do is to get members more involved. So like the socials that we have are mostly only excluded to committee members. I want to reach that out to more people to more members. So I want to increase involvement. I want to make this a friendlier place. So a vote for me is a vote for that. Thank you very much for listening and I'll take any questions. Thank you very much, Sara. Um, and uh, it's my fault I don't have information about Coulson College up here. So when you answer your first question, um, could you just say that? Oh, you did say second year historian at Medwood. Sorry, um, Andrew, when it's your turn. Do we have any questions for Sara? Oh, Richard, yeah. It's Facebook members page. Um, will you take account of the fact that Facebook is a private world which you have to join and give a lot of personal information to, and there may be other union members like myself who don't want to use it? Yeah, thank you, Richard, for that question. Um, I actually didn't have Facebook before starting Cambridge, and I realized very quickly coming here that it was something that I to start because right now there is no centralized platform and most of our activity whether we like it or not does happen on Facebook so I think that it is a start um, and I think if that is successful and if there's a drive for it then we could expand it to emails for example I mean we don't promote our email system enough um, so I think that probably at the start of term, just tell people that this is the union email. If you have any suggestions for debates, for motions, for speakers, then feel free to do that. Um, and they can obviously write in if you, if you want to be traditional and you want to scribe a letter. And of course, we're, we're very happy to receive those as well. But it's just better promotion.
No? Oh, I see. Right, yeah. Uh, that's it for you. Thanks very much. Sorry. Round of applause, please. I don't know if it's... Is it, is it mine that's the problem? Okay. Um, Andrew, could you please make your speech and uh, say your course and your subject, if possible? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Andrew Ospov, Homerton College, and I'm a second-year HSBSer. Um, I'd just like to say, first and foremost, the union for me this term has really become something special. Some of the speakers, debates, and events we've had here have been absolutely incredible, and a lot of that is thanks to all you guys and all the friends that I've made here. But having worked on a lot of debates over the course of this term, having been chief of staff for Cambridge IV, one of the largest university debating competitions that is run here every year, and having been vice president of CUNA, I can see there's a lot of things we can work on. So four points. I'll commit to ambitious, diverse, and entertaining debates with members taking a key role in the choosing of topics. I promise a genuine commitment to expanding access to our local schools and involving them more in our debates. I commit to making floor speeches more rewarding and less intimidating, and I commit to real fairness in student speaker selections for debates. So, first point. In Easter term, everyone has more work and less time. And so I don't want members, you guys, to just come in and to events that you're not interested in. I want to commit to letting all members submit suggestions for debate motions, whether that's on the website or Facebook, and then I'll shape those debates around current affairs, politics, climate change, culture, science, wh whatever else you want to submit. But I want to go further. I want you to be able to vote on emergency debate motions so that every, t every week you can choose something that's relevant to you, something that's current, something that's exciting and entertaining. So it's not just the executive officer picking those topics. But I won't be doing this alone. I want the help of a gender-balanced debates committee who will not only help go through those suggestions, but also use tried and proven methods to increase the diversity of debate speakers. And I even want to broaden our meaning of diversity. We should be including working class speakers, Speakers without a degree, college porters, wouldn't that be fun? We don't only need to be entertained by people who have degrees, we can be entertained by everyone. And diversity doesn't just mean that it's going to be bad quality. Quality and diversity go hand in hand. They don't clash. They inspire. And that's equally the case for access, where I want to involve our local schools more in debates and have them prepare and make floor speeches, and maybe give one or two school pupils the opportunity to speak in some emergency debates, to reach out to our local community and empower them. I also commit to giving members more of their membership. I've heard concerns about how fairly student speakers are chosen. I want to make this process impersonal, and I want to make the evaluation system properly scored. Any auditions where I have a personal friend involved, I'll remove myself from, and they'll be fairly chosen. I also want to give good floor speech prizes. Currently, we don't even give them anymore because the process after the debates is so inefficient. I want to give better prizes, Prosecco, shopping vouchers, and good value restaurant vouchers, something that we used to do but we don't seem to do anymore. And I don't want you to have to come up to the dais and do an awkward walk. You should be able to make floor speeches from the comfort of your seats. So with all that in mind, I want to offer you a service to the union, for a member's union, and for a better union. Vote for Andrew on Friday, tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Andrew. If you could just stay there, oh, there might be some questions. Uh, does anybody have a question for Andrew? Uh, is somebody over there, please? Hi. So you've said, uh, you said that you want to make students... Uh, Sorry, could you use the microphone, please? I didn't... I didn't oh. uh, it is. So... Um, so you said you want to make student um, speakers' auditions a lot fairer and a lot more equal. Um, can you actually elaborate on how you want to do that? Because um, if you're suggesting at the moment that it's done unfairly, can you talk about why you think it's done unfairly at the moment and what exactly you're going to do to make it a much fairer, much more equitable process? Thank you so much. That's great. Um, currently, I've heard from a lot of members, I heard one recently just in the bar um, right there, um, discussing how they often see that the friends of executive officers, so people who would be in my potential role, always seem to be getting the speaker debate slots. And um, a lot of people, because of that, are put off 
because there's not actually a proper scoring system in place. Debate auditions are like two minutes and you're hurried into a room with two people who just quickly go through the process and it's often very, very impersonal. I want to extend that audition time so you can actually have more of a speech and I want to use an impersonal scoring system that measures it based on you know, rhetoric, style, your actual points and then I want the, the officers who are actually doing the interview to be able to give you optional feedback so that you can improve and so that you can understand the process more. So also increasing a bit of transparency and hopefully that will help to improve it. But also, um, there'll be more interviewers. So as part of the gender balance committee that I want to establish, I want to rotate that through every week. So it's not just the executive officer and their sub doing it. That it's a panel that is non-personally non affiliated, so they don't know the actual person involved, so therefore they don't have any bias coming towards the speaker, whether that be good or bad. And I also want to, it to be people doing it who are actually much more invested in it. And therefore, it's not the same person doing it every week, so the same person doesn't get bored. So hopefully, because of that, we'll get more people in who are of different backgrounds, more people who perhaps might be less confident, and fewer speakers who are just always picked because they're friends with the executive officer. That's my plan. Thank you very much. Do we have another question for Andrew? Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. Um, and again, voting for that is tomorrow. Um, thank you. Um, the next two speakers are our candidates for uh, presidency. They will have five minutes to speak. First, could I welcome Adam Davies to the floor? Sorry. Um, hi, I'm Adam, a third year historian at Maudlin, and I'm running for president of Cambridge Union. But before I talk about what I'd like to do in Easter 2020 to make this place more effective, more inclusive, more fun, I'd first like to talk about you guys, about this place. There are very, 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 very few student societies in the world where we can do this sort of thing at this level. As a student officer this spring, you could I, I, I did it, you could email the White House and get a prompt, polite response saying, oh, we'd love to do this, but let's do it another time. We get incredible people that normally charge hundreds of thousands of pounds to speak, and we get them to do it for free. That's how valuable this place is. Our name, our brand, our community is so valuable that people will do stuff like that for free. And that's why I think what we do here is very important and very serious. We have a lot of fun here. Like some of the, my favorite events at the Union have been fun speakers events. When we had Sigrid here in the spring, she performed. It was most the most intimate, cool musical experiences of my life. When we had Brian Cranston here two years ago. It was a fun, freewheeling conversation about the craft of acting and drama and a lot of great Breaking Bad tidbits too. But fundamentally, this place is about serious, important conversations that really make our world a different place. And it's in acting, it's in music, it's in politics and culture. These conversations we have here are important and they reflect elsewhere. And with that in mind, my plans for the Easter term are threefold, like most debates. First, I have a plan to bring the best speakers into this chamber. I was speaker's officer this spring, so if you freshers aren't aware, I was speaker's officer then. I sent 700, more than 700 invitations, some of the world's biggest names. I got George Shakay, I got Ben Platt, I got Leif Shafak, I got Al Sharpton. I ran events for Ellie Golding and Jeffrey Sachs. I have a lot of experience working behind the computer, sending the emails, making the calls. If you want a presidential candidate who has that experience, you should vote for me. In addition, I have plans to make our process of getting speakers even better. I want to plan farther ahead. So like this spring, for example, I, had a, I invited George Shakay for my term in Easter. And he said, oh, you know, can't make it this time. And I immediately responded in two minutes saying, how about Michaelmas? I didn't say Michaelmas, I said the, the autumn, because no one outside of this place knows what Michaelmas means. But, um, and he said, yeah, sure. So we really need to, and lots of speakers officers, if you ha were in my position and look at the email inboxes, lots of speakers officers don't bother to do that. They just say, oh, if they can't do it in my term, why bother at all? That's really, really screwed up. It makes it impossible to plan for the future, and I would change that. Whenever someone says no to us, I will always ask if they come in the future. I also work more with other societies, because we're not the only society in Cambridge that does speakers' events. We, work, we need to work with cultural societies, political societies, whoever, to make sure the uni is a place where conversations in Cambridge happen. Secondly, I'd like to make this place a fair and more open place. And I have a lot of different plans to make this happen. Currently, the union has a reputation, as many people today have pointed out, of being a closed, inward-looking, backwards-looking place. 
And to be honest, it's gotten so much better even in the time I've been in Cambridge. It's gotten better and better each and every term. I continue that progress. Yeah, and so I have a lot of other things. Please look at my manifesto. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam, for that speech. Do we have any questions from the floor for Adam? There is somebody over there. Uh, could you say your name? Hi, um, I'm Astrid. Um, I'm currently the deputy for regular ends. Um, and I, you said you're a third year, right? Um, you've got finals. <laughs> How on earth are you going to manage this sort of workload on top of doing what you need to do for your degree? And like doing both effectively and looking after yourself amongst all of that? Great question. I've thought about this one. Um, to be honest, I think in some ways I have a pretty I'm uniquely well placed to answer this question. Yeah, I was a speaker's officer during last Easter. I had a lot of exams, like more exams last year than I will this year. I'm doing dissertation. Like I have the experience of balancing these things. And honestly, I found actually being a speaker's officer really helped me with my exams. Because sometimes if I'm not doing much, I don't have union stuff on, I just kind of play video games all day. Whereas if I have to send the invitation, do this, get get on it, really help my exams. But thank you for your concern. <laughs> do we have another question for Adam? Uh, sorry, there's, sorry, Richard, just in case there's somebody else there who hasn't asked a question before. But it has improved in the last years. Could you elaborate on that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like, uh, I think in terms of concrete steps to make the union a more progressive place, we've really gotten much better at term cards. So if you look at term cards, like we have them piled up in the office, you want to look at them. If you look at the gender balance, the racial balance, the kind of balance of different areas of life, we've gotten so, so much better at this. Like my term card had kind of, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but we sent more invites to women, or almost as many invites to women as we did to men. We sent more invites to people of color than previous terms. We really work hard in doing this. So like, the day is available if you want to look at it. Thank you. And do we have a third and final question for Adam? Richard. This evening, we have six student speakers, presumably because the original debate motion had to be changed. Uh, last March, the same thing happened. Um, we had six student speakers because all the politicians were in a whip debate in the Commons. That's not what most of us paid our membership fee for. If you are elected president, will you do something that I've been nagging the unions to do for a long time, which is to set up a panel of people who would be willing, at least in principle, to come and speak at the union at short notice. There's lots of very smart and very interesting people in Cambridge. We have a whole lot of local politicians, and I don't believe that they were all asked to speak this evening because I'm sure somebody would have said less. So would you please do something to make sure that we do have something to fall back on in an emergency rather than six student speakers? Great. Sorry, just, add, just, a, just as an instant response, um, your question remains valid in general. Just for tonight, we did approach a lot of local politicians. There's an issue to do with Hustings rules in campaign period as to why they weren't willing to speak on this motion. But I accept your point in general, but just as a specific explainer. Yeah, that's a great question, Richard. I think it's important to ask these things. I think in response to your particular idea about panel, it's a great idea. I definitely look at it. But also more broadly, um, I think the union has a tendency to get trapped in certain topics. So like, I'm very well aware of this. So like, as an American very interested in politics, I invited an enormous number of American politicians to the union. And so if you're people very interested in British politics, you tend to get debates that are kind of dominated by the schedules of the House of Commons. So I would definitely try to look at other kinds of debates, cultural debates, kind of other kinds of areas of debates where people aren't subject to those exactly the same kinds of changes. But your point stands. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you for all of your questions. Uh, let's keep it up with our next candidate. Let's give Adam a round of applause, sorry. And our Last candidate, Daniel McKinnon, who's also running for president. He has five minutes to speak, and then hopefully there will be some questions. Daniel, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Dan. I'm a fourth year, so I'm very old, uh, engineer from Queens, uh, and I'm running for president. Um, I have been here for a long time, 
uh, if I'm elected, I'll be the 12th president in my time at Cambridge. So I've seen a lot of presidents promise a lot of things. I've seen a lot of presidents promise to make great change to the union, and I'm not going to promise that because they never achieve it. I have four things that I want to achieve, and they're all small and very achievable in Easter term when, quite frankly, no one really wants to get anything done because they have exams to worry about. Uh, number one, I'm a fourth year engineer, so my exams are at the beginning of term, uh, so after first week I'll be much more chilled out than anyone else. Um, so, policy number one, uh, I want to change how we do access membership. Currently it's only available to those on the full Cambridge bursary. Um, in order to be, to be on the full Cambridge bursary, you have to be a UK or EU undergraduate. I'd like to not only uh, add that to add to those people the um, non-EU uh, undergraduates, but also postgraduates. It feels to me a little bit racist that in order to get access membership, you have to be from nearby. But, um, uh, and then I'd like to make access membership scalable. If you get half the Cambridge bursary, you get half the discount. It's not rocket science, it's relatively simple. Um, my second issue is that, um, as a lot of other people have pointed out, uh, we do take ourselves way too seriously. We have a terrible reputation. When I told my housemates I was planning to run for president, they said, ugh. <laughs> Um, and also, when we, we talk about what the members want, when we're, we're in committee, we're talking about what the members want, but quite frankly, we spend 90% of our time here or in lectures, so we don't know what the members want. Um, I plan to solve this, or not solve this, I'm not going to provide a solution. Anyone who tells you they're going to provide a solution is either lying or, or wrong. Um, uh, and I'm not trying to say Adam has, um, sorry. <laughs> um, I, I want to have uh, I want to use the elections in Easter term uh, to hold a number a small number of ballot measures for small ways to make the union a bit friendlier. For instance, um, a personal pet peeve of mine is the black tie debates. Um, <laughs> uh, I would propose getting rid of this, just going to smart because everyone wears smart clothes at formals several times a term. People wear black tie maybe once a year at a May ball. Um, and, you know, if we're for free speech, let's be for free speech. Let's allow people to submit, mo submit things that go to the members. Um, I'm not saying we're going to take everything because we get a lot of trolls saying, you know, oh, when we should have debate motions. This house believes your mama is fat. <laughs> um, uh, my next issue, number three, is that we should, have, we should have more fun at the union. Easter term is awful. I've been through three of them. <laughs> um, Easter term... You don't want to come and sit at the union and it feel like a lecture because you've just left a lecture, you've just left the library, and you really need to think about anything else. <laughs> so uh, my plan for more fun at the union is to increase the size of the ENTS budget. Um, I was social events officer this term and I ran the critically acclaimed Freshers Ball and the Brisbane parties in the Cayley, but, they, um, but the Brisbane parties in the Cayley had to had to not lose money because I have a tiny budget. My budget was one thirtieth the size of the speaker's budget. Um, my plan would be to increase that budget and lose money at events so that members can have a great time. If, if you know, you're spending three pounds on a ticket and getting a five pounds experience, that's, a, that's, that's fantastic. Um, but it's because colleges don't do that in Easter term. In Easter term, you're sort of left to your own devices. Um, sorry. And my fourth big policy is to have a three-sided debate. Not all issues have two sides, the way you present them. Um, I mean, some debates, we've had two debates this time, I believe, that, where the abstention side has won. So quite clearly, that does not have two sides, because people agree with a third side. Um, we were considering doing a bit debate this term on Kashmir, but we couldn't decide whether to do it, you know, India versus Pakistan, or... Um, India-Pakistan versus independence, but with a three-way debate, you could have a side for India, a side for Pakistan, and a side for independence. Um, now, I admit some issues have more than three sides, but we only have three doors. So, I think three-sided debate, three doors. Um, simple. Um, and uh, East... Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm done, but make the union fun again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daniel.
Do we have any questions from the floor for Daniel? Uh, somebody over there who is not asked a question yet. If you just stick your hand up, so yeah, perfect. <coughs> Sorry. Um, you were talking about um, uh, how you would sort of split the decisions between members and the committee. So some members get to decide, but not all of the time. So how would you distribute what members are deciding and what the committee is deciding in terms of speaks, speak, speeches and debates? Um, no, I'm, not, I'm not talking about speakers and debates. I'm, I'm talking about smaller decisions about how the union is run. Uh, because how the union is run is really an, what, what affects how people feel when they come in. If, if you come into the union and everyone, all the stewards, all the people running the event are quite cold and distant, you don't really get the best impression. I mean, when, when I joined as a member quite a long time ago now, admittedly, um, I loved the union at first, but then I met a lot of committee people who were, quite frankly, assholes. Um, and so I got a terrible opinion of the union. And so my, way, my, my reason for putting these issues to the members is to make us take ourselves less serious to, and to give some opinion back to the members. Because right now, the members get to choose the leaders, but they don't get to choose any of the issues the leaders discuss. Um, and that's, I think that's a problem. Wonderful. Do we have another question? Uh, the lady over there in the whitish coat. Hello. Um, so I think tradition makes this place sparkle. And I think when people walk into this chamber, they feel it. The atmosphere is so unique and at times it's electric. So um, what role do you think tradition plays and how are you going to add to it? I don't think Easter time is the, Easter term is the time to add to tradition. I think Easter, ter Easter term is the time to... Um, set aside our worst traditions and just enjoy ourselves. Easter term shouldn't be about making history because no one, as, I mean, I've been here for, this is my fourth year, not a single one of my favorite debates has been in Easter. Not a single one of my favorite speakers has been in Easter. Um, just because Easter term is a time where the debates, half of the, half of a good debate is made up by a great turnout. If you have four people in the audience, even if you're having an incredible incredibly lively debate. You need that sort of laughter when someone makes a joke to make a good debate. An Easter term, you just can't get that. Um, I feel like tradition is magnificent. Don't get me wrong. I, the first time I walked into this chamber, I was awestruck. I think I, I think I stood over there with my jaw hitting the floor for about a minute before I actually took a seat because I realized I should get out of the doorway. Um, tradition has its place, but I, I feel like tradition's place is not Easter term. Okay, and could we have a third question? Um, sorry, uh, young men, that's okay. Could you wait for a microphone? Um, thank you very much. Um, what makes your candidacy different as president? Um, yeah. I think the fact that I'm an engineer makes my candidacy different. Um, everyone has a friend who's an engineer or a scientist, and not to brag or anything, but I, I feel like we're quite good at getting stuff done. Um, uh, if you look at the, the past three or four years of union presidents, you have, I think, five historians, four people who studied HSPS, one who did HPS, and, um, and maybe one or two other, I think a geographer as well. Um, so I'd be the first scientist in a while, uh, and I feel like um, that would give a difference of opinion, because every president's term reflects them. Um, you can see that we've had, a lot of, we've had a lot of people talking about social issues this term because Rachel loves and is really interested in social issues. Um, my term would be different because I love scientists. I'm a nerd. Um, and so like, I'd have more scientists come and talk because I feel like scientists often have fantastic opinions. Um, even if they're not talking about science, they're, um, and I feel like that would make the term different. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, you might be thinking, oh my god, as a scientist, I'm going to vote for the other guy. Um, if you feel that way, please do. <laughs> but just remember to vote. Thank you very much, Daniel. I'm just going to make... <laughs> couple of housekeeping announcements. Polls open tomorrow from 8 and they close at 6 in the evening. 
Uh, the results will shortly after that be announced in the bar. Please come along. It's wonderful when there's a full room and a real buzz when the results are being read out. Um, you can vote online. In fact, you, you can only vote online, so please do. Um, and other than that, I hope you enjoy the main debate, and everybody, please vote tomorrow. Thanks very much.